sound speeds. Cameras are rolling. We are here live for episode eight with Annie Seminova. Correct. Actor and a good friend of ours. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And you have uh, done, not done a live podcast before. But I've done a bunch of Zoom podcasts. A lot of Zoom podcasts. This is a different beast. I it's actually, just, I dreamt of doing this. Yeah, just doing it live, right? It's completely different. It's a lot, uh, it's uh, more fun. It's more real. And it's a lot easier when you're amongst friends, people who know each other. And I want to say, first of all, Annie got me a nice green tea, iced tea. And I appreciate that. Show that to the camera. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Always. With this weather, I kind of had to do it. <laughs> you had to do it. You're like, I need to get Alex a iced tea. Yep. And I appreciate that because it, what is it? 100, 101 degrees. Around that. Yeah. It's really hot. And, and we're here today. And what are we going to talk about? We don't really, I just said, hey, come, what do you, you want to do a podcast? And you're like, yeah, I'd love to. Just catch up on our artistic lives. Yeah. We and haven't seen each other for like six or seven years. It's right? been a long time. Yeah. And we worked together at the that short movie. Yeah, it was a little short yeah. movie we did when it first started as a sound man. Yeah, not the best one we ever did. And it never <laughs> got released. Our, the movie, did you ever get to see the movie? No, sometimes it happens. Yeah. Yeah, they don't release it. You didn't get, did you get any footage or did they give you? Any? I haven't, nothing. Nothing, no, right? I, I, I emailed them to like a hundred times and no response. No response, right? Yeah. And we kept, uh, we kept in touch over the years, but we never actually, until I said, hey, let me, let me call Annie about a podcast and you're like, I'd love to do it. Exactly. Like, Maybe that was the reason for us to meet there and do that short movie. So we found friendship right yeah totally and i still have the sound footage from that actually i keep all my sound footage from from everything i ever do even if i go back like 10 years maybe i can use it for my voice reel yeah right? for your voice and for your i could always send it to you it's on some Perfect. it's on some hard drive somewhere so good luck finding it though it's good luck <laughs> i have like 500 hard drives everywhere hidden all over my house and uh so yeah that was good i wish i wish we saw what we made because it was i thought it was a beautiful thing i thought it was a beautiful and you did great thank you oh, and and i'm gonna say, i'm gonna say something i'm gonna i'll try not to make it too long but i had just started out as a sound man mm -hmm. on that movie it was actually i'd done a lot of sound but mostly boom operating where i'm holding the microphone and i'd used lavalier mics a lot, but on the outside for interviews and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you, I, I've never told you this, this story, but you had a huge impact on my sound career. No way. Yeah. And um, so I'd never, I'd, it was probably my second real film, like narrative film that I'd worked on. First AD comes to me on, on that movie and says, Annie's ready for her mic. You need to put a lavalier mic inside. Mm -hmm. And I was nervous. I was freaking out. I didn't know because I had no experience hiding lav mics. And you were wearing a t-shirt or something at the time. I don't know. Mm -hmm. in, in any part of the story, let me know if I messed up. And I came over to you. I was so nervous. I don't know if you could tell. Can you remember? I was uh, really nervous. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was sweating. I was like, oh my God. I'm gonna... And and you're like really attractive. And I was like, oh my God. What? what? I'm like, where am I going to hide this mic inside her? Because I have to put like, literally, I have to put like stickies inside your shirt or hide it somewhere right. in your hair somewhere. And I, I, I come up to you and I'm going to put the lav mic. I'm like, hey, how are you? Um, and I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was freaking out. And you looked at me and you said, I don't know if you remember this, but you said, Alex, it's going to be okay. Just do what you have to do. It's okay. I remember that. And you said, just go for it. Go put, if you need to go inside, you need to stick it inside, whatever, do what you have to do. And then something snapped in me right there. I said, from that point on. I gave you confidence. My confidence went from zero, literal zero, where I was, I don't know. Like to after that, any actor I went to, I was on it. 
I didn't even, I just went in there like professional. Yeah. And so you had, from that point on, I, I became the sound man that I always meant was meant to be in my head, you know? So you gave me the confidence. You, I don't think I've ever told you that story. I haven't told anybody, barely anybody that story before. Actually not, no. Yeah, so thank you. I didn't you. know it was all so these, meaningful to you. All these years, thank you. And it was meant to be that like, we, we met again. We texted each other We right, once in a while. I'm like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, there's this rap. Actually, I think we did see each other at a rap party. We did, yes. Three years after that, you were doing, on some movie that a friend of mine was on. You went on. Do you remember? Where in was it? In a bar. It was, it was some bar, bar in uh, Echo Park, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, I, I drank way too much. <laughs> well, me too. <laughs> I drank... I drank way too much, and I I remember I fell over off a chair. I hope you didn't see that. I didn't. So, yeah, we meet again. And uh, so you didn't get any footage. You didn't get anything off of mm -mm. that. I always wondered, like, whatever happened to that movie? Because it was really good. Yeah. Do you find that... I, a, I was going to ask you, because you, I was thinking about the friends I have in, your, in, in, in L.A. Mm -hmm. Do you find that you meet a lot of your friends in your social circle through film projects? Well, I can say my only American friends I meet through the projects because everyone else is Russian speaking people. Oh uh, yeah. So the only friends that I have Americans they're from like other actors or people from other productions or right. sets, something like that. Yeah. I feel like I, I was thinking about it. All my really good friends, all of them. I met over the last 15 years through film projects and they're the best friends I've ever had. Yeah, because you become like family when you work on something together as a teamwork. It's just such a deeper connection than just meeting someone, I don't know, in the bar. Yeah, exactly. And you have, uh, you go through things when you create art with multiples of people. Mm -hmm. There are 20, 30, sometimes 50 people you go through something. Sometimes they're a month long, three months long, where yeah. you're working with people. And my hair is getting messed up, so we're going to have to reshoot this whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so you meet all these cool people. You make amazing friends. Mm -hmm. I like yourself. Like I met and then you gave me that confidence. And every time you work on a movie... You, you, you remember build. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, always, I always remembered you more than almost anybody because... Of that one story I just, we talked about. And I always remembered you because you gave me that confidence. You're like, Alex, I still remember your face. She's like, Alex, you didn't say relax, which is, you know, that saying relax makes somebody more nervous. Yeah. So you're like, Alex, in a really calm voice, you said, do what you have to do. And I still remember that. And I always think back to that. Now, like my confidence level, I go in there. Biggest actors, I'll work with actors that are Oscar winners, right? Wow. I'll just go straight up to them. Hi, how are you? Meet you. I know exactly where to put the mic. I don't fuss. And that was the first step I took into becoming the sound man that I wanted to be. And I knew I could be. So. And look look at you now. Now you have your own podcast. Now I'm podcasting. And uh, this is the first one where I talk about... Actually, I talk about being doing so i just love sound i like i like doing a lot of things i'm sure you have done many things different things on a set other than acting and we'll get a lot into acting of course because that's what we're really here for um but uh, i just love i have a passion for for sound i like directing writing uh set decorating is my one of my other favorites but something about sound and this has to do with acting is i I get a, a close relationship with actors. Mm -hmm. I'm the I I'm one of the only people other than maybe say makeup or wardrobe or something where I I have to get up close and personal with you. Exactly. Yeah, and you find that with other sound men at all? Not so much. No, I think it's really depends on the person. Yeah, yeah. but I maybe. always feel bad for them to hold that thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> when I was doing a lot of sound work, you should have seen my arms. <laughs> my shoulders were huge. I was ripped. Because I had to hold this boom pole for so long. But I find that uh, I, I have this close relationship. And it's not just because of the physical. I have to get clo up close and personal. Sometimes people are naked. And I have to put hide. Right. Where am I going to hide a lav mic when you're naked? <laughs> it's the toughest thing. I, I have to, Usually I have to go into hair. I go into hair or I'll 
or we just don't do any any laughs like that but um yeah i find but the the thing i find most with actors with sound is i get to hear you first digitally mm -hmm. i don't know if that makes any sense like i when you're acting you're in your zone you're, mm -hmm. you're in front of the yeah. camera hardly anybody else has headphones on they have to hear you like you hear people in a normal conversation right i get to hear you how closer it's closer and how it's going to sound mm -hmm. on screen on screen mm -hmm. exactly so there's a little closeness i feel makes so much sense yeah i never thought of it this yeah way. And, and a lot of actors i don't know if you do this a lot of actors when they're in a downtime when they're between scenes mm -hmm. they'll go hey alex <laughs> how you doing how you doing there bud you know how you doing and uh, you feeling good you're looking like you're sweating there buddy <laughs> do you ever talk to sound man no I you never haven't. you might want but it's, now maybe i'll try yeah you should try if it, it makes them feel so good it makes it's the greatest thing i love i love when uh it's, not many actors will do it but i love when they talk to me they're like hey how you doing bud i know you can hear me by the way um uh something so and so and so and i'll be like oh god <laughs> <laughs> um eric roberts an actor eric roberts he was very talkative to me. Mm. He'd be like, what's up, buddy? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Anyways, okay. So uh, what's the other thing? Let's talk about acting now. Let's do it. All about acting. And you studied acting. Mm -hmm. And this is back, back when? Back in Ukraine. I have a bachelor in theater. Mm -hmm. And when did you, at what age and did you want to become an actor and why did you want to become an actor? Um, I started uh, acting when I was 21. Before that, I was uh, in music, in choir conducting, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to be a singer, but kind of felt always that I'm lacking acting in my singing, if that makes sense. You're, you're lacking acting? Acting in my singing, in singing, because every song is a story and you have to like live through it. It's not just notes, right? And um, I gave birth to my daughter and I was thinking like what I would do right now. And I was, I was married at the time. And in Ukraine, musicians, they don't really make money from selling their music. Um, and they have to like perform a lot. And sometimes it's some sort of sauna or, you know, so I was married and it was, didn't feel like I wanted to pursue that sort of career at the time. And I decided to be not, become an actress uh, because this is, was something that I was interested in. And I went to the university and uh, I studied and I worked in theater for some time. And then I moved to L.A. And that was about... 10 years, 10 years ago. ago. I remember because we met maybe seven years ago. Yes. And at that time, you told me you were here for three years. Yes. And what do you, st okay, I, this might be, I'm going to ask a lot of dumb questions. I'm good at asking dumb questions. What in what does getting, you got a bachelor's in, yeah. in acting. So what do you learn? This is the dumbest question. What <laughs> What is, what do you learn in acting a school compared to just taking uh, an acting class? Classes? Like yeah. Well, uh, in acting school, you go deeper in like architecture of the drama and uh, like you read lots of plays and you work with material, like classic material, uh, you know, like this, I don't know, Shakespeare or uh, Chekhov and stuff like that, that you don't really, you know, learn here in studios. Um, you basically spend from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., in there, working on material, you also study ballet and uh, fencing and things like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. In theater, a lot of theater, theater stuff. We did all, only seen, theater. Only theater. Yeah. I think you said mm -hmm. that, and I probably was like drawn blank. Yeah, there. we did only theater. I love in theater. university. I love going to theater. I love seeing like little ones, like that are maybe fifty seats or four, even twenty, thirty seats. They're tight, and there's a there's a smell inside them. Right? Yeah. Do you know that? You know that smell, yeah. of course. There's something about the acoustics, the acoustics the, uh, in the place. The smell. being in the moment mm -hmm. when um, the action is going on. Yeah, when the action is going on and it's real, and I, every time it's, even though you practice, 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 
a lot of times it's different. Every every time every you do time it, it's, it's different. different. Yeah. You don't know what to expect. Somebody's off their game one day. Somebody's on their game one day. And every time it's different. That realness is the most beautiful thing. And when exactly. you're in there watching that, the, the, you smell the, them. You see you see the the clothes they wear. Yeah. And, and the sweat. The sweat. <laughs> And you, and I, you know what I always think about? The funny thing is I always think about what's going on behind the scenes. Mm. And I've honestly, I've never worked. Maybe one time I was behind one of the, in the theater. Uh, I was in the back. I got to see all the things, that, the preparations. I love that. Do you like that? Do you love the stuff that goes? Or you, or are you sitting there going, doo, 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 doo. no, you're probably not, right? You're, you're practiced actors so. well i haven't done scene uh, theater for a while yeah. right now yeah i i know that and every time you're nervous yeah like i'm i guess 50 years later i would be nervous yeah still yeah i would be i would be crying and sweating back there <laughs> no matter how many times i do it i'd be so nervous i get really nervous even today i was like and he's coming over i'm seeing her so long i got nervous that's get, okay like hey you know but after a couple of minutes We've already done like 10. No, we've done like, does it feel like 15 minutes? Yeah. Uh, uh, 10, it feels like, 15. It yeah. feels like seven minutes to me. Really? Okay. Like mm -hmm. seven minutes. It feels like seven. But on stage, time goes differently. Yeah. Have you noticed yeah. that? Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a lot faster or slower? It goes faster. I th think, I just feel like time stops. Yeah. On a that stage. Makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And what about, uh, I was going to ask you about here in LA, talking about nervousness, auditions. Mm. How are auditions as an actor? Because I'm not an actor, of course, and I've never had to audition. And have you been going, do you go on audition? I'm sure you go on auditions. So how, how nerve wracking are auditions? Are they crazy? Well, there are two different worlds before pandemic and right now. Oh. Before pandemic, there will be like 90% of auditions uh, in person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was nerve wracking sometimes. But right now, almost everything uh, online, you do self tapes. So you don't, you're not nervous at all. And you get to do multiple takes. Yeah. You're you, like, I'm picking this one. Yeah. You better not do a lot because it just get repetitive and not alive anymore. Mm, but yeah. like, Four takes would be the best um, amount of takes. Four takes. Yeah. And the wall, max. the wall you see behind me has been used multiples of times mm -hmm. for those self tapes. I had friends come over. I'm like, "Hey, man, can you can you shoot this for me?" I'm, I'm like, "Can't you don't have a wall?" No. <laughs> My friend who uh, is probably gonna watch this is gonna know. Hey, that's me <laughs> talking about me, bro. <laughs> I love you, man. Uh, he knows who he is. Uh, so. So self tapes and do you ever do live? Do you ever do live auditions or no? I do, but not so much anymore. Maybe so, since pandemic, I've done maybe three auditions live. Live? Oh, so they actually there's people behind there, or the, like maybe like a Zoom call or something. No, Zoom call usually for a callback. For yeah. a callback. Mm -hmm. For callbacks. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. And then they just want to see your personality, how you yeah. are a real, in real person, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about a little bit about working on sets, mm -hmm. actual, a real going, Hollywood sets, right? And you do a lot of preparation before you go on to make a movie. You need uh, to, yeah. You prepare, <laughs> you prepare your lines, you get the nerves, and you um, you want to do your best. Great. Is it? And how do you feel in front of cameras? Obviously, we're, we have eight cameras around us right now, but when those cameras are rolling, and there's multiples of people. That's crazy, right? As an actor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, every time it's easier and easier. Mm -hmm. and But still nervous, some nervousness, but it cannot be bigger than your confidence. Yeah. So, um, and I, I found that actually therapy helped with that a lot. Yeah. When I uh, did therapy, when I did different like psychological like trainings and stuff, I realized that I became more confident and my nervous nervousness became less. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just a practice. It just doesn't get anything. Mm -hmm. You just work on it and then you get better at it. Same as my my sound. You know, I got calm. I got yeah, it's more. perfect. Actually sounds really, I got, really good. I like to talk really close to the microphone. <laughs> and yes, the same for me. Uh I get sound isn't so bad, but I still get that. 
I'm still, like I was saying, I, I'm not nervous about the law of mics as much anymore, but I always uh, freak out on other things. Like, oh, mm. is my battery full? Oh, is my card going to run out? Or, you know, I always have something yeah. that I'm worried about. Those nerves. I wish there was, a, I, in, like you said, therapy or meditation. I know you told me you meditate. I meditate a lot. Like meditate two, a lot. sometimes three times a day. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. See, I remember mm -hmm. you were telling me. You remember me. everything. I have one of the best memories. I just don't have, mm -hmm. I can't remember people's names. They'll say, hey, how are Same. you? My name is Annie Alex. Nice. And then like two seconds later, mm -hmm. you. But I remember people's faces. And faces. one time I told my friend that I have to probably work in KGB or, I don't know, FBI. And she's like, <laughs> no, you have to be that person who's checking tickets in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. I, that's all. That's what I thought I would be too. I never thought I'd be doing what I'm doing right now. Life takes us in weird directions, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're. Let's. What can we talk about? Other things about acting? Because I've. This is when I first started this podcast. It was going to be actor centric, mm -hmm. and on the most part, I've had actors on, but more filmmakers, and. I had a drummer on, which was great. She's also an actor. So, but I haven't talked specifically about acting mm -hmm. too much. So this is like one of the first ones where I want to talk about acting and give, you know, have you talk about acting and let people know um, what acting is about. I'm going to ask you another dumb question. This is going to be probably the dumbest question. <laughs> I love um, dumb questions. You've ever been asked, what is acting? Acting is a living. Pardon, that was me. Acting is living in certain circumstances, like truthfully living uh, and uh, creating a character and telling a story of this character. Very, that's an amazing answer. <laughs> it's an amazing answer for a question that is so vague and general. But maybe it's not. Is that have you ever been asked what is acting before? I don't think so, but uh, I've been asked why you like acting. And for me is that when I act, I'm so in the moment. Actually, if you think about when we feel the best in our lives, you can see that this is when we are in the moment. We're not thinking about the past. We're not worried about the future. We are in the moment right now. And acting always gives this to me. When I'm acting, I'm in the moment right now. So I feel alive. I feel happy. I feel oneness with other people, with the audience and with people who are co-creating with me in the moment. So acting is a happiness. That makes that's a great. It is happiness, right? It is giving your true self in through another's character's voice, but it's really you. Is it? It's you inside. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's your soul. Yeah, it's your soul. And, and can anybody? Can anybody become an actor? A well, good one, a good one. Well, a good one. And I'm a business acting coach, and I teach lots of actors and parents of young actors. Uh, that's why I always say yes. I believe that everyone can become an actor, and I think we all uh, born so free and talented and beautiful. And then later, some society or family starts like locking us and give us those like limiting beliefs and constraints on us. And then we lose this, you know, talents and openness and ability to create um, when we are kids. So I believe if the circumstances are right around the person and they have enough like safe space to develop this, I, I believe that everyone can be an actor. Okay. And so let's segue since you talked about your business you teach the business side of acting. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people listening right now have no clue what that is. Unlike me, because you have told me about your business side of acting. But let's uh, speak to people who are listening who go, well, what is the business side of acting? Tell us a little bit more about what that entails. Mm -hmm. And we'll start there. Let's start there. What does what what do you teach? Mm hmm uh in in your courses mm -hmm. so 
let's talk about from this side. So I believe that acting has three pillars, uh, success uh, of the acting. It's mindset. You have to be self-motivated. You have to believe in yourself. You have to be confident, you know, and all of that. And you can work on, on that for sure. Um, also, acting itself, uh, like mastery of acting, right? It's acting skills, training, training, training again. And the third part of it is a business side. How to build acting as a business. Uh, what you can do, how you get an agent, how do you, I don't know, pay your taxes, how do you promote yourself, your marketing and stuff like that. And it's so important, like every, uh, all of those three things are very, very important and it's not possible to be an actor without one of them because you can be the best actor in your acting studio, but no, no one will ever know about you because you're not getting out there and you're not uh, like showing yourself to the world. Um, so I'm teaching um, the acting side of it. And obviously I work on mindset also and um, give advices. I also create meditations for moms and for actors on how to get into that creative state and, you know, higher frequency when the uh, creativity starts. But mostly my specialty is business side of acting. Um, and most of my clients are Russian speaking mm. because they just believe me, they trust me. I have a built personal brand in that community. But I also do have American clients, which I'm very proud of. Yeah. <laughs> and the business side of acting. So that includes, like you said, um, having the right mindset, of course, um, mm -hmm. but also how to market yourself is very important, right? So you teach a lot of how to market yourself and push your, put your self face out there and get find, have people uh, find you because if you just sit there and I'm an actor nothing's going to nothing's going to happen right you have to go out there so you teach people how to is there things like how to get auditions uh, how to present yourself in auditions things like that right a lot of that and, and you will be surprised to know how many talented actors i've met throughout 10 years of my life here who are amazing actors and they do not know how to promote themselves mm -hmm. uh, so i teach them my system it's step by step everything from the zero so like all my clients they just starting uh, so it is how to create your perfect vision for your career how to make your headshots what acting studios to go to um, how to create your online profiles and what websites you can trust and what you cannot trust how to find an agent how to uh, what kind of questions to ask when you go to the interview, how to write a cover letter, how to write a resume. So all the, all of those things, how to create a network in the industry. So actually it's like all the questions are covered with my cor course. And we're going to get, but at the end, we're going to get all that info. We want to promote your course if you'd like. Uh, we can, of course. we can put <laughs> uh, you. all your info at the end. So I'm going to give a, give you a moment there and we'll put your Instagram, any social media. And, uh, so, um, I had a question mm -hmm. in my head and I, I completely blocked it out by <laughs> say, by saying the social media stuff, but business side of acting and, and you've been doing that for how many years now? How many years have you been teaching this, mm, these courses? Around six years. And what inspired you? You went, you got here three years. You were, you so you did it for six years. So after four years, what mm -hmm. what was it that you said? You know what? I should be teaching mm -hmm. this because you. Pro what got you to switch? And well, do both, right? So you still act. You're still a working actor. But what got you to say, "Hey, I want to start teaching Business what I've learned." Acting. Yeah. <laughs> what what start? What got you into that? Um, you know, I think when I just moved to LA and I went to acting studio and I remember that people don't really want to share things like that. And sometimes they just don't know themselves or you are shy to ask. So you feel like you're in vacuum. You don't know where to go, how to promote yourself. You're afraid of scams. And it takes so much longer when you don't have someone who could just like give you steps what to do. So my first... Uh, business was kids acting studios. Mm. I had three acting studios. We did Broadway shows with kids. It was pretty successful, but I just burned out. And uh, by that time, my daughter, be, 
started booking different cool commercials and other parents would just come to me like, hey, can you help us to do the same? Like, how did you get there? And um, I remember my first program was called Your First Five Steps. So, I cr- and, and I have a very strategic mind and I just sat down and put like steps that I've done. So I created that program and then I started teaching people one-on-one. They started getting results. And then when the COVID hit, I was like, maybe I'll just start doing this online. And I started teaching groups and not only LA as it was before, I started teaching all over US. Mm, And actually uh, uh, COVID was a good thing for my business because I didn't spend time anymore to like drive somewhere, meet with person. I started teaching groups, so it was much better for me. And then I onboarded team in one year, and now I have like 13 people in my team, and we teaching from 50 to 100 people at the same time. Wow, that's so impressive. I'm so you. proud of you. And you, you've taken a completely different trajectory than I have. My my career has gone down, yours has gone up. <laughs> no, my career has gone up. Too. You I've, never I've know been, in this city, you never maybe know. tomorrow. So talking about, you kind of brought it up uh, about, it's a cutthroat business acting here in LA like you said they, people don't want to help each other because hey I don't want to help them they might they might get the role I I'm fighting for uh, it's all about me but you went there you're like hey no I'm going to teach you what I've learned I want to make you better and through that I'll make myself better because I find that sharing I know it's saying sharing is caring but sharing information it doesn't just help that per- other person; it helps you as well. It, Absolutely, it, it, it's very important to share and uh, knowledge. Sharing knowledge is really important. So we're already it doesn't feel like it, but we're already thirty some odd minutes in. So um, let's just go last bit of last bit of acting um, information. Um, talking about acting, uh, maybe you have some little bits of advice you can give to actors and then we'll move on to some other topics going on with you. Absolutely. Um, If acting is something that you really want to do, you have to be ready for rejection. You have to be ready. You need to film 50 auditions and do not book anything. But then when you book one, you're just all over the moon and you're happy. And um, you need to have a profession that can support your acting because... I mean, at least first two years, like you cannot really rely on uh, acting as a um, income, you know. Um, What else? Um, Yeah, just do it if you love it. Um, For me, I decided for myself that I will never give up. And that's why I'm not, I'm never sad or disappointed because I'm like, what's the point to give up? Like there is, nothing like you cannot give up uh if you give up then you die right Mm -hmm. so i'll just do it and um i actually have a blast and uh, i'm not working that much because i have my accent which i'm too lazy to work on (laughs) and my agent says don't worry you will never play americans (laughs) you you sound great though (laughs) thank you and there's a lot of russian uh, actors i didn't know is there a big russian acting scene here in la you know uh, yes and no, because it's right. funny. I've done one movie that's coming out soon called Karaganda. Actually, in New York, there is a premiere in a few weeks. Um, and there is probably like around 50 or 60 actors. Uh, they all Russian speaking and I pretty much know all of them. Right. Yeah. So all my friends who I know, they're in that movie. <laughs> yeah. So funny. <laughs> everybody, everybody in the community is like, I want those roles. Everybody yeah. gets in it. And with some of them, I didn't know that they are in the movie. I just found out when I saw an IMDb. I'm like, hey, you were on that movie too? I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And uh, any other pieces or I'd want to end you, you know, you, any other, anything else? That's a pretty good one because I believe if... In almost everything, like you just said, what separates some people from other people, and this isn't almost anything, not just acting, is keeping at it, working hard, never giving up. Because it, it, well, that's what separates people is the people who just say, hey, this is what I want to do. This is what I love doing. I don't care. But there's no, su- there's no such thing as success. We're all, we're, it doesn't matter. Su- success isn't the ultimate goal. What is success anyway? 
Exactly. So we just keep working, keep working because we love doing it. It's not about, oh, I'm not famous yet, so I'm done. It's been five years I'm acting here and I'm not making it. I'm done with acting. No, don't be. You should have never gotten into acting in the first place. Exactly. That means you weren't even, you didn't want because it's not about, oh, I haven't made it. I'm not getting any roles. No, you like you said, you'd be perfect person because you teach the business side, which is not, don't ever give up. Um, and don't have expectations then you will never be upset right yeah you'll (laughs) never be upset i have no expectation of becoming a huge director writer producer just do what you love i just love doing sound i I don't care i'm not i don't care if it's a student film it's a hollywood film doesn't matter and um speaking of writing and producing Mm -hmm. i remember you told me you wanted to write and produce are you doing any writing and producing or do you want to get into it eventually i don't want to write no because writing because i don't believe that i have talent for that and i think that writing is actually the most important thing in um uh, the story itself is the yeah. most important thing and i believe that everyone should do what they should do and do not try to do something i mean you can always try but don't expect that you'll be amazing writer if right. you don't yeah. have talent for that so but producing i have that like I have that, um, you know, feature in me. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I I haven't produced much. I I only produced musicals and I produced one short movie, but I see myself in the future as a producer. And uh, I'm just at the point of zero right now. But I'm thinking of like going and study for that. And uh, um, I have an amazing. I I believe it's a beautiful idea for a movie that I want to produce and I, I kind of feel that it, it is a project of my life because it's connected to like Ukraine and everything that's going on right now there. And so uh, for me, it is like with like no expectations, I've given myself a lot of time to kind of create that project, but yeah. I have zero idea right now, like how to do it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally see. I, I'm, since I'm a sound man, See? Yeah. I mean, I have general ideas. Sound man always comes in. Yeah. I have friends who are producers. I have friends who are directors, but um, I haven't started, like, do massive actions in that way, uh, in that uh, path yet. I feel like we work long enough in, in film to eventually start producing. We eventually all become producers of some sort or writers of some sort in writing. I just got into writing. I said, oh, let me just try it. And I, I started to love, I loved mm-hmm. writing. I started reading books. I used to work at a screenwriting company and I have a lot, I have all, I have all these books, you know, Sid Field, all that stuff. And I said, wow, I actually like writing. I'm not a good writer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, if you love it, you should do it. I, I was like, let me just, let me, let me try it. And I actually loved it. So... So I think we talked a lot about acting. We're already about forty minutes. We're gonna, we're definitely gonna break the record for all of our podcasts. <laughs> uh, I have one guest coming up uh, in maybe two pods that we're like, he, I told him we're gonna do thirty minutes. He's like, no, we're not. We're gonna do an hour and a half. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> maybe I'll start doing hour long podcasts. But uh, my computer is not fast enough to expo- export. <laughs> anything past 30 minutes so all right so we'll uh we'll veer off into a new topic um so um you moved here from ukraine we'll talk briefly about this about 10 years ago and mm-hmm. uh, how you like living in la what is la like i for you? love la it's my place i knew it from the very first moment that i step on this ground yeah it's got it's home now it is home and yeah. um if and what's your favorite part of LA? There is no favorite part. Like I love all of, all of them. I love Koreatown. I love Hollywood. I love West Hollywood. I love um, all of it. All of it. I live in Valley. Oh, you're in the Valley. But I used to say I would never live in Valley. It's a place for retirement. But now I live <laughs> <It's> there. The, <laughs> I'm very familiar with the Valley. Encino, Sherman Oaks, Granada Hills, Northridge. I've lived all of them. Mm-hmm. Family, Woodland Hills, you name it. I love, I grew up. I spent about 12, 13 years in the Valley, so I know it very well. It's- Every place is so unique and so like authentic to itself and like different food and different people. It's just 
a lot of Amazing. Armenians. Lots of Amer Armenians. First time when I uh, flew here in 2013 to study for one month in um, Lee Strasberg. I flew, and that was before the war, I flew through Moscow and I got into this uh, plane and I, I looked around and I'm like, why are there so many Armenians? Like, is it a right plane? Is it the plane to er Yerevan? And then I uh, landed and I sat down to the uh, cab and the driver was Armenian. I'm like, what's going on? I didn't know that there is such a like huge... Um, uh, what do you say it population population, yeah. population of armenians and then i like google it and i'm like oh okay three million armenians here we own this we own this uh <laughs> city especially glendale i'm sure you've been to glendale we own glendale um shout out to all my armenian brothers and sisters very beautiful and clean uh city and the cool the thing is a lot of the eastern armenians they you could speak russian to them I know. So they are very, they always look at me because I'm Western Armenian, which we have a different dialect. And I don't speak, I was, my parents were, came here in the 60s. You know, we don't, mm -hmm. I don't speak Russian. So Armenians will meet me and go, How is it you don't speak Russian? You you're not be, real Armenian. Yeah, they're, they're like, <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. I'm like, I was, I was born here in LA. <laughs> you came here and your parents came out. You came here like 15 years ago from Armenia. Of course, you speak Russian. So, yeah, a lot of... I, I hope to speak Russian one day, yes. I played um, uh, in Halo out there of William Saroyan oh, uh, yeah. play. I loved it. It was my first role in theater. Saroyan is our is our savior. He's our yeah. man. We love I know him. he has a monument in Armenia. Yeah, yeah, William Saroyan is our famous. Anybody who hasn't uh, heard of William Saroyan, please do look him up. Yeah. Great, great man. He's great. He's our pride of Armenia. He's the pride of all, all of our Armenians, and uh, yeah. we love him. Uh, so we are getting now. We're forty-two minutes. I always talk about. <laughs> I always talk about. Oh, we're forty minutes in. I I don't think any other podcast talks about. Okay, we're forty minutes in right now. We need to like start <laughs> wrapping it up. But hey, we do things differently. This is my living room, literally. So we do a lot of different things. So. Um, Let's move on to a couple other topics, and then we're going to get to 10 questions. Okay. Uh, so we also, I know that you, we always talk about Korean barbecue in, and I'm pretty sure you also love Korean barbecue. I love Korean barbecue. I, I know. Because I'm half Korean. You're half Korean. Yes. And see, now I remember you told me that, and I had totally forgotten about that. You're... So you, you're Ukrainian. Yeah. Korean. Mm -hmm. There's probably like 10 of you in the world. No. No? No more. More? Yeah. Uh, I'm My mom's from like um, Soviet Union. Yeah. Korean's population. She was born in Uzbekistan. And then they met with my dad in Russia. And then he brought her to Ukraine. So um, I don't know much people like me, but I know there are so much more of them right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you're the first uh, Ukrainian Korean I've ever met, and hopefully I'll meet others. But I think that you're, um, I, I don't think I'm going to meet a lot in my lifetime, but it's nice to meet you Thank again. You. And um, so we talked about Korean barbecue. It's a recurring theme. I, I'm trying to talk about Korean barbecue on every single episode because it's the greatest mm -hmm. thing ever. And uh, do you like kimchi? I love kimchi. Yeah, one of my last episodes we talked about Korean barbecue and I how I I'm not a fan I'm not a fan of kimchi, so I go with my friends mm -hmm. and I they get all the kimchi and they're happy and I just never eat it. What's your favorite Korean barbecue restaurant? Oh, we go to um Cho Oh my god, my friend is going to kill me for not this. <laughs> well, we had one called Dream Mm -hmm. barbecue and uh jin jinju here mm -hmm. which is a it's a 75 80 year old grandma in the back who's making oh, all the little I pieces go there. <laughs> it's right here it's called jinju just opened jinju. up hojang chan i think it's called hojang chan hojang chan is highly rated on google reviews 4.8 please go see them and those are my favorites you have any favorite spots uh i do but I mostly, most of the time I go to Genwa, Genwa. just to be safe, you know, because they, they give you lots of salads. Genwa, it's, uh, there's one in Beverly yeah. Hills, Ooh, one in Beverly Hills. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I used to like road to Seoul 
Ah, okay. Uh, and uh, there's one that, but I won't be able to say the name. I, I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm trying to remember the one we always go. Hey, Jing Chan. Hi. Yeah, the, they have lots of meat, right? It's a lot. Plaza. Yeah, yeah. I like the Chosan Gal Chosan Galbi. No, wait, there's Chosan Galbi. The Galbi the meat, mm -hmm. but there's a place called Chosan Galbi, which is mm -hmm. Olympic Boulevard and Western around there. Mm -hmm. It's really nice, actually. They have an outdoor area too. Mm -hmm. So I like eating outdoor. We gave Korean barbecue five minutes of our <laughs> podcast because you know what? Korean barbecue is great. And maybe we'll get uh, sponsored by a Korean barbecue spot. One day. There should be a Korean barbecue movie, like a rom-com that is centered around That's Korean such barbecue. That's a great idea. I'm writing movies here, guys. If you guys need ideas, I have all the craziest, stupid ideas. Um, and then we'll, we'll talk about last thing so I get to 10 questions because okay. uh, we're going to try to keep it under an hour. Um I know you also love karaoke. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Give me some of your great favorite, if you had to pick, if I had a karaoke machine, which I actually do have a karaoke machine, and I said, let's go do three songs right now. What are your top, or it doesn't have to be three, your favorites? I'll karaoke. do Nora Jones' Turn Me On. I'll do Oasis Wonderwall. Okay. And I'll do probably Let It Be Beatles. Let It Be. Yeah. Let it be. We well, could actually, okay, we're going to cue it, guys. <laughs> Our producing team, hey, guys, can you guys pre um, put the let it be in? Thanks. Okay, here we go. And <laughs> our producer, we actually have no nobody in the background. Usually we have people here that nobody gets to see. Today is just you and me. I, I celebrated my birthday in oh. karaoke. It was June 1st. Uh, it, it's karaoke called Venue, Venue here in Koreatown. I rented a room. I think it's originally for eight pe 18 people, and I had like 25 people. <laughs> so it was very hot, and uh, uh, you know, lots of people. But it was so much fun. Oh, right. karaoke is probably the, like the most memorable thing you could do for a birthday. So much. Fun. I've never thought I've never done karaoke on the birthday. That's must be. That's do it. Yeah. It's really cool. Karaoke, yeah, and then everybody gets a chance. It's one of those rooms, right? So everybody, yes. it's just your friends. It's just like, your friends, and I would like um, uh, add time. Like every, I'm like one more hour, one more hour, one more hour, <laughs> and in the end, just me, my sister, and my friend. They're like, no, no problem. You could have eight, eight more hours. Keep ordering those drinks, please. Yeah. And, and did anybody sing uh, karaoke "Happy Birthday"? <laughs> yeah uh, karaoke i need the words hey and i had this cake there was like a cake and there was like two drunk barbies uh <laughs> and, <laughs> and bottles uh, that sounds like a great birthday i'm yeah. gonna have to uh do that for my next one i'm uh probably gonna do pinball for mm -hmm. my birthday this year which is coming up november 2nd so everybody get your gifts ready uh, who's watching this I, uh, <laughs> Please, uh, no, no gifts, no gifts. We don't need any more anti-consumption here. So we don't like to consume things. So keep your gifts to yourself. Just send me money, which I will donate to good causes. Exactly. Right, because I don't I don't want anything more. I have enough trashy stuff here that I don't need. <laughs> I have too much knickknacks. Okay, we're going to, we've done, uh, I think, a good, so we have 10 questions time mm -hmm. right now. I did. And... Let's go. These are, I'm going to shoot these questions off at you mm -hmm. and we're going to test your, how quick your mm -hmm. brain works. Let's do it. Focus. Are you ready? I'm ready. And our, our 61 followers so far, our subscri <laughs> subscribers. So you could say, don't not worry. Not bad. Not bad, right? Uh, 61 subscribers so far. We're growing one. We're trying to get subscribers one at a time. That's not the real goal, you know? It's, it's like we get back to what we were saying. I just was not pointing at you, by the way. I was pointing there. Um, so we're we're going to hang in. We're going to keep working and grow. It's not so much about subscribers, right? It's about, yes. I love doing this. I love Consistency. talking. Consistency. I talk a lot. I love talking. Mm. I didn't know how much I love talking. I'm, I'm totally introverted too. I don't like, I'm not out there and talking to people. But on here, I could do this. I could do this. It's, it's therapy. It's actually. It is. Just talking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting more and more confident. I'm, I have I barely said um and ah, so the last couple episodes, I've been making a point not to say um. Uh, so you um want you went to school um, and uh and I kept doing mm -hmm. that kind of stuff and I'm getting better at not doing it subconsciously, yeah. not doing it. I'm trying to talk a lot You're slower. You're doing great. Thank you. You're doing great too. You're really easy to talk to, and if I talk really slow. 
then I have no ums and ahs and I get better. Okay, 10 questions. Here we go. Okay. Let's start off with an easy one. Mm -hmm. You have to choose. Would you choose to drink coffee or tea? Tea, green tea, every morning. Every morning. Mm -hmm. Green tea is great. It's good for the body. Yeah, it's actually anti-cancer. Yeah, and it's not always green. I love green tea. And herb yeah. tea, too. Herb tea. Chamomile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some uh, moringa. Moranga? Moranga? I don't no. know, but don't know. <laughs> because it doesn't have caffeine, yeah. I can drink it uh, in yeah, the evening. Yeah, that's nice. In the morning, only green tea. I love all the uh, she like the you know she she teas and stuff. They have all these weird names. Okay, let's go down to something hard hitting. All right, so you're you're and I'm doing this off the top of my head. No, I really I have a cheat sheet here. You <laughs> probably see on the on the ca camera here. I wrote these out earlier. No, I didn't. Okay, so you're casting for a film, mm -hmm. and you need an antagonist, the bad guy. Mm -hmm. For all our listeners who do not know what an antagonist is, I don't know. I'm probably like not being very nice because I think everybody knows what an antagonist is. Mm -hmm. You need a bad guy. Let's just say you need a bad guy for your movie. You have the choice of Gary Oldman, Edward Norton, or Michael Fassbender. You have to choose one. Gary Oldman. Because actually with the movie that I dreaming of creating there is a kind of bad guy and i was one of the options that i was looking for casting in there it was gary oldman he is amazing right he's the best he's a man of like 50 characters he could do anything he does and if i had to choose his my favorite movie with him it would probably be and he doesn't he, air force one with the airplane harrison ford just the way, tell me what I want to hear, or hostage <laughs> dies every minute. They're like, we're getting that plane for you with the gas. We're going to get you the plane. <laughs> he just was so good. He was over, I call it overacting in a good way, mm -hmm. where he was he was so committed to that role. He's always committed. I think he's originally a theater actor, right? I think so. I think oh, so. I'm... Not hundred percent. Yeah, probably. Me too. Not hundred percent. Do not a uh, all you fact checkers. Do not um, <laughs> write in the comments. Our, you know, when you have sixty one subscribers, it's like not <laughs> nobody. But you never know. Like one 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 gets a hit. Okay, let's move on. Um, mm -hmm. You have two films you've auditioned for. This mm -hmm. is question number three. You have two films you've auditioned for, and both of them liked you and chose you to be mm -hmm. the lead. Mm -hmm. actor and they're filming though they're filming on the same, same day time. same exact time so you can only choose one one is a horror film and one is a rom-com which one do you choose horror horror yeah horror and i want to play monster you want to play the monster that's my monster. dream role oh yeah, yeah. I, and, I, and i actually was always good playing monsters yeah like animated too maybe they'll put little balls on your you know you know how they do that? They put the CGI oh, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, And then yeah. you have to do like Avatar. They do the Avatar with it or any type of CGI where you're actually moving. So they're getting your voice. But you're yeah. not actually there. But they, they replace you mm -hmm. in this CGI monster. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be monster. cool. Horror is a great answer. I was I was wondering if you'd say horror. And I said, I think she's going to say horror. Like a lot of blood and stuff. Mm -hmm. Scary. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm and they just horror. have a um, like courage to play that because not every woman I think wants to look ugly, but I love looking ugly. I love that. I love that. Horror, <laughs> horror is great. If we could only make horror films, that's all I would ever make. Okay, so uh, let's talk. You said you have some classical choir conducting experience. Mm -hmm. Uh, who, who are some of your let's say top three composers of all time? New or old doesn't matter. What era? Some mm. top three composers. I love Chopin. Uh, I love Rachmaninoff. Mm -hmm. And who would be the third one? Um, let's say Beethoven. Beethoven's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all great. Those are really yeah. great answers. I'd love Chopin myself. Bach. And mm -hmm. I'm going to say something more, somebody more modern. John Williams, uh, Star oh, Wars, yeah. Star Wars guy, Star Wars, and all other Hans great Zimmer. films. And I actually, here's a side note: I've played on multiple times on in John Williams' office. This Ooh. is when I was 20 years old. I worked uh, at Amblin DreamWorks, wow. and I had access to his room, and I would go and sneak in and play on his grand piano. And this is right when they were making Jurassic Park Part Two, which is the Lost World. Wow. 
and I would go sneak in there and play this. And I'm probably this is the first time I admitted it. And you guys come after me for I didn't break in. I had keys. So, any case, I played on this piano. It's one of my pride and joys of my life. Those are great answers that you gave. So Chopin, Beethoven, Thank you. and Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff. Man, you know, interesting story about Rachmaninoff. When he moved to America, yeah. he was so you know immigration is hard, so he couldn't be able to write. And then he had a friend who was hypnotherapist, and he healed him. And after that, he started writing even better. And Americans, they know, you know, they're not accepting all um, composers from Europe, yeah. but they accepted him, and they love him right now. Yeah, so. he's a uh, he's getting his resurgence for sure. Let's go on to question number four. Mm -hmm. What's the one thing you don't love most about working on a film set? Um, do same thing uh, for lots of times because in theater you just have a story and you relieve all the story at the same time, right? But in movies sometimes you do same scene all of all over again, and it's, sometimes it's just too much. The repetition maximum yeah. four. You like? I remember you said yeah, <laughs> maximum four, no more than four. I think four is a great number. Actually, I've seen that actually in a lot of directors' interviews. They're like, my sweet number is four, mm. four takes. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, there's people who like do 100 takes. Yeah. You know, but so. actually, no, not that. Uh, the most thing that I don't like is actually if I'm cold. Cold. I hate that. I can be in heat 120, not a problem. But cold, I'm just like, cannot do it. My, my I know you didn't ask, ask me because I, this is 10 questions for you. But my <laughs> two least favorite things, waking up early has mm -hmm. got to be number one. Mm -hmm. 5 a.m. call time, yeah. 4 a.m., forget about it. I, <laughs> I'd be doing a lot more gigs if I didn't have to wake up early. I don't like waking up before 10 or 11, honestly. Mm -hmm. I'm admitting that, okay? People, don't hate me. I'm. That's why, you know, I'm a lot doing young. I, I look younger than I am because I get a lot of sleep and I like my sleep. And uh, my second thing is the really bad food, mm -hmm. what it does to your health. Mm -hmm. I eat all the crappy food that's on the table and pizza. doesn't matter. Pizza, your body Snacks. just snacks. And then you're you're off your schedule. You have 12 hours. Those I don't are the like that too. Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, we're about to hit an hour, so I love <laughs> it. Uh, let's go on random question. The Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? You have to choose one movie. Haven't seen any of them. You haven't seen any of them. We'll, we'll move on. Uh, just let's uh, off the top of your head, which one would just sounds better to you? A Breakfast Club. And that's probably the better. I think most people would choose Breakfast Club. So we, I think that's a great answer. That's my homework to watch all two of them. They're two yeah, classic 80s mm. movies. And so, yeah, they're great. I think The Breakfast Club is a actor's, is a more of the actor's movie. Mm -hmm. because it's all set in one location pretty much so you get to really see a big library kind of spot so it's interesting i'd say the breakfast club if you had to watch either one mm -hmm. all right let's move on to the next question you could travel back in time to any era beginning of 20th century to the europe when the like Hemingway or Remark was there and like lots of, um, it's just interesting time, very cool and very, I mean, lots of drugs though, but there are always lots of drugs. <laughs> there are lots of drugs today too. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's a very wonderful time. Yeah, I, would, I mm -hmm. like that time too. Let's uh, move, keep moving on. Let's keep this going fast. Yeah. Uh, what... One thing, do you wish you could tell your younger self? Mm -hmm. I would tell her, do not spend time with people who don't really want to spend time with you and don't waste your time. Work more on your craft, music, acting, than just hanging out with random people and just waste your time. And drink less and don't do drugs. No, do drugs. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm that last one. I'm, uh, I would tell myself too. <laughs> Nothing hard, mom. I, my mom's going to watch this. So mom, I don't do any drugs. Never have touched any drugs. I, I took a ever. sip of alcohol once and I didn't <laughs> like it. I only drink green tea yeah. and vitamins and minerals and a lot of sleep. 
and two liters of water every day. Two liters. I got to work on that. I'm like maybe five glasses of water every day. I don't <laughs> know how many. That's pretty good. Is that good? It's yeah. Uh, is coffee count as water? This is no, a site. No, it, it doesn't. Mm -mm. Even though it's made with water. It is, but it's actually like dries you out. It dries you out, yeah. So I feel like you're. it's water and then you put like a table, a spoon full of coffee or whatever for this much coffee and then all of a sudden it doesn't become water isn't mm -hmm. that weird it is weird it's like a drug it's it's a drug but i guess it's better to drink coffee than nothing yeah it's still like <laughs> it's probably Liquid. bad for our liver and kid liver and kidneys or whatever regulates okay let's move on really quick uh aside from acting mm -hmm. what other role would you love to have on a film set a producer for sure producer mm -hmm. Produttore. Mm -hmm. In Italiano, they say, Prodettore. Prodettore. producer is probably the best behind the scenes. You don't have mm -hmm. to actually be go, go to the set. I like that part. No. I like executive producer. There are different have... parts of uh, side, like different types of producers though, yeah, right? right. All these different producers. Yeah. I like the executive producer one where you just say, here's a check. Um, <laughs> just give me the IMDb credit and put and my name in the credits. And all money. <laughs> and then I'm going to come to the film premiere and that's it. So I give you some money. Give me the IMDb credit and I'm happy. I like that. But that's one. a huge talent to bring money. Yeah, it's a huge talent. Yeah. If I had a billion dollars, I'd just be producing. My, my IMDb um, would be 100, no, 1,000 credits. Yep. I'd just be like, you filmmaker? You're doing indie film? Would you write? Here you go. Check. 50 Gs. Oh, you would be generous. Producer. Oh, my, I would be the most generous because I'd like, I want to help young, especially young producers uh young filmmakers i'd be like you, you're making a movie is it horror okay here you go is it a good movie oh okay yeah i'd probably say <laughs> give me a synopsis first okay <laughs> now, let's move on let's move on so we're already at an hour and um i told you we wouldn't be longer than an hour okay. so you're gonna probably kill me at this point okay last one what's one movie that you wish you could have been the lead actor in Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina. Yeah. I haven't he uh, heard her name in a long time. And mm. I knew a lot about her because I studied history mm. and film history. Mm -hmm. But I forgot everything. A lot of drugs. Not mom. I don't do drugs. <laughs> but uh, I li I've heard this movie, uh, f this actor, this this role. Character. Character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... So it's uh, since we were all of time, I'd go. I'd love to go more onto it, but I don't want to take your, any a lot more of your time. But thank you for your answers, and I think the ten. Would you like the ten questions? I love those. I yeah. think it's a good way to end, right? Because yeah. it, it asks you, gets you, and it, it it's nice for conversation. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, let's end the podcast here. Uh, I want to thank you for coming out, thank Annie. You, Alex. And it's nice to see you again after all this time. After the, we saw each other on the film, and then we saw each other at the. Rap, rap party. party and then and then we just kept in contact here and there but yeah. finally i was so thankful that you said i was like let me call let me because you know i had to, i was telling you about the story about the law of mike you had a huge impact on my career and my evolution as a sound person and i said you'd be the perfect person because i want to tell that story because it might it might help other sound men so i said you'd be the perfect person to come on because you know we're this is our this is our episode eight now so I thought you'd be an important person. Absolutely. And I there are so many nervous sound guys out there. Yeah. Nervous sound guys. Uh, give me a call. <laughs> Maybe I could bring in sound, uh, some nervous sound guys to come on the show. This is a nervous sound, ca sound man podcast. Welcome. Okay. So anything to plug and we'll put your IG or any other social media in yeah, here. Yeah, of course. Let's put everything. Um, my Instagram yeah, my website. And what sure. is yeah? What is your Instagram? If uh, I have two, I have Russian speaking and English speaking. Uh, okay. Yeah. And we'll yeah. Uh, we'll give me give us that information, and I'll mm -hmm. put it I'll put it down. Perfect. Thank here. you so much. Thank you Such for coming. Such a great idea. Do this podcast, and you know we don't get to connect with people sometimes day in day life, and um, it's it was such such a pleasure and such yeah. a good time thank you pleasure is all mine thank you for coming and uh thank you all for watching and don't i know everybody says this but like and subscribe and share and tell all your friends and we appreciate you all and we'll see you again next time thank you again annie thank you alex you're welcome all right bye bye, bye.